Good morning to each and everyone presented over here. Today, the faculty, administration, staff, and students have gathered over here to extend information about BS Economic Honors at Simbaisi School of Economics. We would like to thank you all for connecting with us and giving us the opportunity to provide intricate details about the college and its structure. I would also request you to pose your question after all the speakers have spoken. Now, before our respected uh, professors give you insight about college, its structure, internationalization, and placements, I would like to share my experience as a student at SSE. I am Giri Sharma, a second year student, and I'm currently the head of social work wing, Samarpan at Simbai School of Economics. My journey with SSE started back in 2019. I had just completed my 12th standard and was only passionate about economics. On researching about colleges online, reading their course structures and talking to people around me, I came to the conclusion that this is the college, Simbai School of Economics, I wanted to get into it. It had a perfect balance between theoretical and practical aspects of economics. The striking difference that I found between this college and other institutions upon researching was that it not only focuses on economics per se, but it also provides you a lot of interdisciplinary subjects like law, psychology, political economy, and even foreign languages, which gives students a space to explore their interest beyond economics as well. In the beginning, I was a bit nervous as I was getting out from my comfort home zone. But let me tell you very honestly, I have loved this college since the moment I have set foot in necessity. It is a place where all the cultural diversities, students from diverse background and all the stereotypes are burst. The faculty, our professors are extremely approachable. Even the management is extremely approachable. And with my past two years of experience at SSE, I can tell you with utmost certainty that students really are the first priority. The fact that faculty is very approachable and very well versed with the practicability of their subject matter, it plays a huge role in the learning process of our students. After all, economics is a dynamic subject. You cannot learn the subject in isolation. You need to discuss it. You need to debate about the theories and who better to do all of that than with your own professors because they're very, very approachable. It gives you a lot of exposure in and outside the classroom as well. And the webinars, academic events and skill development workshop that I have personally attended in the past two years I am certain that these are the opportunities that students in other colleges might not get a chance to will. SSE has total 24 societies and clubs. All of them are quite active. And as I mentioned, I had Samarpan and we have organized tree plantation drive, old age home fundraiser, and even a pan India campaign against rising rape culture in India. We have also organized a pan India policy writing competition, Niti. SSE encourages students not only to organize these competitions, but also to take part in competitions organized by other universities. I have participated and reached the finals of Policython organized by societies of Harvard University and even I am Indore. In conclusion, I would say that SSE is an ocean of opportunities and it would give you a complete holistic exposure of the world outside. Now, I would request our director, Professor Jyoti Chandiramani, to give the opening remarks and tell you more about SSE. A very good morning to all the potential prospective students who have decided to join this webinar this morning. A warm welcome to you. Um, thank you, Girish, for your, for your words. I think they came straight from the heart. And they resounded the very philosophy that we've tried to ingrain, I've tried to ingrain for over a decade at the school. Um, we have, it's a school which is, I would say a place for leadership grooming. And all my colleagues out here are young leaders to take this place ahead. I'm so happy to be here to steer this over the last decade. So students, a little bit about you know, my point of view and to tell you what to expect from Symbiosis School of Economics. Symbiosis School of Economics is a part of the Symbiosis University. And I'm sure when you think of the word Symbiosis International University, it's a very unique name. After all, you hear of Shiv Nadir University, you hear of you know, Azim Premji University, you hear universities 
your, your Pune University or Savitri Phule University, named after people. But symbiosis is a name which talks about a symbiotic relationship, a relationship between different stakeholders. All right. It's a biological term, really. And our very uh, motto is Vasudeva Kutumbakam, the world is one village. Of course, the world is one village because uh, the pandemic has showed us that a, you know, a, a disease which starts at a particular place has spread all over the world. Over 193 countries, the world is one village. We better accept that. I mean, we have empirical evidence to that. So yes, even symbiosis is like a world which is one village. Students coming from more than 400 cities from about 28 to 29 states, um, you know, um, union territories, uh, the genders, gender diversity that we have, we have large number of, you know, girl, girl students, boy students, a very diverse uh, environment, like Girish said, very LGBTQ uh, uh, friendly, not at all judgmental. Um, so there's not just, you know, we don't have a gender bias, we are gender neutral. We are religion neutral. Um, we really strive, SSC strives to create equilibrium. Today I was reading a book and the title of the book was, you know, Education with Social Responsibility. And I, I love the name of the book, written by a dear friend of mine. And I said, of course, we've all followed this education pattern with a sense of social responsibility. Whether it is Kushbu with her art of living, whether it's Niharika with her, you know, institute social responsibility, whether it is Varun who would take the students to Jeevit Nadi, uh, Shilpi with her digital technology, like, you know, make, making us more green friendly and less paperwork and Ashtesha now talking about the nudge behavior, you know, the way you nudge people into certain actions so that you have a better world to live in. I think we strive to create equilibrium. Now, as a student, you must be wondering that what is it that you expect of a college when you join in? You know, you're, you're coming to a place. So A, you are coming to a university, which is quite a reputed university. It is among the top ranking private universities in the country and has made a name for itself in a very short time. I have been associated with this university right from 1985 with symbiosis and um, absolutely thrilled that I have spent my entire life in this university, in this symbiosis society, the trust that I am associated. So one is the university that you have been a part of. Two, Pune city. What a livable city. What a great city. City which has got its own historical importance. Even if Kushbu is in Shillong and Shillong is a great place to be because you know that's her a hometown or Shilpi is in Lucknow or Varun, though from the north, Mumbai is his hometown. I think everybody comes running to Pune. Okay, people like Ashtesha and me are absolute Punekars. And uh, I'm so happy that we are a part of a city which is so culturally advanced, so safe for the girl student and not just for girl students, for all students. So students, great university, great city, Girish told you great faculty. Now let me tell you what else. Rigorous knowledge, well evolved. You come here to study. So you better get something that's damn good. I think it is good. And if you don't like something, we love to hear what you don't like. We love to hear what students don't like whether it's a pedagogy, whether it's a syllabus, whether it's the examination, whether it is what, because we want to manage expectations. We want to understand their point of view. Not necessary that whatever they say, we listen to, then we give them our analysis also. But what we come out with is stakeholders solutions to, to situations. So great knowledge, a um, lot of rigor, a great pedagogy where we are engaging with students. Now we've been 100% classroom interaction. And we've had 100% online teaching. Now, having had the best of the two worlds, I think my, my teachers are now from this 100% straight line being at the two opposite ends, 
they're converging to give the best of both. So they have the capability and the learning to, to improve their uh, manner of, uh, you know, reach out to the students in a manner which will keep you satisfied. Whether it is breaking into small classrooms, having tutorials, whether meeting one-on-one, -on -one, whether having WhatsApp messages, WhatsApp calls, whether it is, you know, micro team classroom breakups, blended learning, all this is there. What are you going to go out from this institution with? Knowledge, fun. Swati will tell you about the extracurricular activities that are there in due course of time. The, the you know, it's, it's not just all work and no play. There is a lot of fun. And can you believe it? During this pandemic period, the amount of awards our students have won, the amount of online activity that they have participated has made me even more pr proud because otherwise it was a geographical distance that would not allow you to be in Kolkata or Chennai on the same day. But in the morning, they would be in one city uh, taking part through the online mode with a competition and in the evening, the other. So I want to tell you, we are capable of matching any of the formats. The two extreme ends we have managed. 100% classroom, we are very good at that. Every teacher is here because they're so good in class. If they were not good in class, they would not be here. And the 100% online. Uh, moving further, what I would like to recommend is that students who come here should believe that they have come here for lifelong learning for ethical practices, you know, to gain multi, -pers multi perspectives, multiple perspectives, interdisciplinary perspectives. Uh, it is uh, Varun who's a, who's a keen researcher. He's always asking questions. They could be inconvenient questions. It could be Khushbu with the qualitative learning that, that goes in, the quantitative learning that we are that SSC is very good with, with the software, with the skills, you are going to go out in the dynamic world, in an uncertain world, in a complex world, with the knowledge, with the skill sets, with the ability to cope with it, all right? Not just the ability, the aptitude will be groomed and the attitude is something that will be nudged we can't, we can't, uh, the attitude is yours. And we've had times when, you know, students at 18 are going to be like an 18 year old. Students at 21 are going to be like a 21 year old. The way the master students respond to it, situations are very different from the way the undergrad graduation st students respond to it. So we don't expect you to be, you know, be, to be born middle-aged, not at all. You're going to ask those, questions, you're going to be that, there is going to be that adolescent in you, there is going to be that youth in you who's going to ask why this, why not that, and we have all the patience. So I remember Girish talking to me on the sidelines and he says one thing that he learned during this pandemic is patience. I think that's a great life long skill that you have with you because it's going to help you move a long way in the future. With these few words, I want to say welcome to SSE and let my young leaders tell you what all they're going to offer you. Have a great day. Ask all the questions you have. If we are unable to answer something, we shall write into you. But I don't think there's going to be any question that we will not be able to address. All right. Thank you so much. And over to you, Girish. Thank you. Now I would like to call uh, Shilpi ma'am to explain students about the PIVAT and the set examination. Ma'am. Yeah, thank you, Girish. Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, I hope uh, you all are doing well. Um, you can now type in the questions to the respective people as below. So there is a PPT that is there in front of you. You can type in your respective questions to the people mentioned. Uh, let me give you a brief about uh, SET and PIVAT. And after that, we will move to uh, various categories of questions that you have. So to begin with, uh, for applying to SSC, you have to appear for the SET general exam. Uh, you can go to the SET website for all the details regarding the SET general exam. 
so as of now if you can see that uh, the general exam consists of four different uh, categories that contains questions on general english quantitative general awareness analytical and logical reasoning the number of questions and their respective marks are also mentioned on the website so there are a total of 60 questions equivalent to 60 marks which will be given to you in the set examination along with the set examination you will have to write the vat that is the writing ability test for now the test dates are july 10th to july 13th there is no negative marking for the wrong answer and the total duration for the test is 90 minutes so 60 minutes are for mcq which are followed by 30 minutes for vat for set uh, now you all must have seen the notifications on the set website that the set exam is going to be a proctored exam which you can give from your own home so it is going to be a home proctored exam the dates for which i have told you it's from july 10 to july 13 now with the set exam you also appear for the vat test but once the results are declared you will be getting the uh, result only for the set examination the vat is evaluated by the respective institute once you are selected for that institute so once the results are out initially you will be getting only the set scores that uh, you have got after the exam and the vat will come in once your pi for the respective institute is done the entrance test registration fee uh, you all know it's uh, 1950 and for each program that you wish to apply for it's 1000 each now since this being a home proctored uh, exam and uh, you need to have some kind of infrastructure ready at your end so i request all of you to please go through the set website there we have detailed guidelines on what should be the hardware requirement what are the do's and don'ts everything please go through each and everything properly before you take the test so the internet uh, the internet based assessments uh, has to be taken by the candidates for set assessment has to be taken through uh, i mean there would be a link given to you and you can i mean the details will be given to you provided to you in an email you just have to follow those links and those details to appear for the exam you need to have a uh, operating system which is windows 7 10 you can also give it on linux with 14.1 and 16 version you have to have a minimum of 4 gb of ram and a processor of intel core i3 a minimum of 100 mb of free space and an internet and an internet connectivity which should not be less than 2 mbps so basically just go through all the details these are some uh, highlight points that i am telling you that uh, the internet speed should be this and the minimum processor and the ram should be whatever i have specified but just go through each and every point carefully before you sit for the exam so that you don't face any issue during the exam these are all minimum hardware requirements which all of you must be having i think the uh, the ios and the ios android devices are not supported so please be careful about that before you sit for the test so uh, test dates i have already told you the registration and the payment for set uh, will close on 28th of june midnight so please do your registration and your payment of set before that uh, i mean don't wait till the last minute otherwise uh, Uh, there could be some uh, i mean you may face some internet issues or whatever and then once the date is over we will not be able to entertain any queries now as you see there are multiple dates for the test so you will be given a particular date and time slot to appear for the test from your home link and details will be provided to you on email uh, so there are various sections that you will find on the set website uh one is examining instructions then the other is remote assessment faqs the third is remote assessment ex remote assessment then examining do's and don'ts and online test instructions i request all of you to kindly go through all these tabs completely and read each line before you sit for the test so that you don't face any issues during the test 
now i'll briefly explain you about the process which is going to be there at the institute so as of now the dates that were declared on the set website are the set test dates and the last date for payment for sse as soon as the set will finalize all other dates we will be updating our website with the current dates for this admission year so tentatively we can say as soon as the set results are out we will be starting with the pi for sse so you can expect us to start our pi from the 1st to the 10th of august now regarding the pi process the pi is going to happen online we will be sharing you details wherein you can select your slots for pi you will receive an email regarding details of pi that is the documents that you have to upload prior to appearing in pr your reporting time etc means all the details that you need to know before you appear for pi will be communicated to you over an email the pi will be conducted on zoom and again the same details the links and all will be shared to you in advance uh, your selection will be based on the three parameters for any institute the first parameter is the test score based on which you will be selected for the pi as i have already mentioned for the people who are selected by any institute their vat is going to be checked by that respective institute so say for example you are selected for sse based on your test score then your vat paper will be evaluated and your pi will be conducted so the selection is based on three parameters test score that is 50% weighted then vat 20% weighted and pi 30% weighted so so a total out of 100 marks you will be evaluated 50 for set 20 for vat and 30 for pi so that is all about set and pi vat i'll come back again for whatever queries i have got into my chat box uh for now i will hand over uh, the mic to Dr. Niharika Singh, Program in Charge, BSc, to brief you on queries related to academic plan program. Over to you, Niharika, ma'am. Thank you, Shilpi, ma'am. Good morning, everyone. Uh, I have put a couple of queries in my chat box related to the syllabus and the subjects that we follow at SSC. Like uh, our director, ma'am, already said that we already have had uh, been tackling this online program and very efficiently on say be it google or zoom or ms teams so these are the three generally these are the three plot platforms that we use for our online teaching at present uh, you know that ma'am has already said we send our students for discussion for uh, experience a real classroom experience we send them to different breakout rooms for discussions and for various other activities in uh in in short in small groups so that it becomes effective and that is how we deal we are dealing with students in a larger group and in smaller groups we are having a lot of activities not only extracurricular activities but in fact in classroom activities as well we have uh something which is called integrated learning component in which they learn it is a very innovative kind of a uh, structure or uh, an assignment it is not the typical written form of an assignment where you write and submit it you we can have role plays we have debates inside the classroom we have projects and presentations and so on coming to the program structure which you also can see at our website you can download it the program structure that we follow the first semester is basically uh, dealing with the core subjects which is the core environmental studies that um, sensitizes you towards your environment how to have a sustainable life sustainable system <clears throat> then you have foundation for mathematics now mathematics i've got uh, Uh, very different questions related to mathematics some students have asked whether students who have a non mathematical background whether can they come and uh, join bsc economics yes of course you can uh, people from and students from any background can come and uh, appear for the uh, set and pivat examination 
and students who do not have a mathematics background we have a bridge course apart from the first semester of foundation of mathematics course we have a bridge course uh, of statistics as well as mathematics uh, before the uh, beginning of the formal uh, classes at ssc so you do not need to get scared of mathematics and statistics at all those who are passionate about mathematics and statistics uh, we have a lot of courses related to mathematics and specialize in mathematics as well because we offer specializations even in um, undergraduate uh, undergraduate level i will come across the electives and optional courses and specializations as i move forward to the semesters so the first semester deals with foundation of mathematics statistics macroeconomics the basics of macroeconomics microeconomics and indian economy so these are the four uh, courses those who are even from the science background or non economics background can come and get uh, the details and idea of economics and the various subjects various papers related to economics semester 2 as we move forward we go to the higher level of statistics indian economy details of mathematics mathematical economics macroeconomics and microeconomics now from semester 2 we introduce elective courses related to business accounting so those of you who want to uh, because you know accounts is very important in economics you need to be acquainted with the basics of accounting is there so we have an option between business accounts and those who are already acquainted with the basics of accounts we have a, a bit of advanced course for them which is business accounting and financial analysis which later on gets into a detailed specialization of finance as we move to semester 3 you have research methodology uh, which gives you a uh, detail some of you had asked about whether this this is a research oriented course or how much of research is there you have a lot of scope if you want to really get into the research world research uh, research methodology is one subject that is taught over in uh, semester 3 uh the semester 3 also you will see will get into as you go forward you will see that you will have primary research and secondary research as papers proper papers wherein you will apply whatever you learned in research methodology in semester 3 so public finance and its application you learn then econometrics is introduced in semester 3 development economics is introduced in semester 3 now we also have a uh, skill based and we also have uh, uh internships various kinds of internships so the at semester 3 we learn we have internships with ngo later on when you move to semester 4 and 5 you have internship with the corporate business so that you have an idea of how you deal with whether you are going to be uh, applying for an ngo after uh, getting the graduation or you go to a business corporate and join a business unit so what is the environment and how and how is it to work over there then in semester 3 uh, we also have electives apart from the financial electives which we uh, which we have in terms of money banking and public administration and policy and we also have uh, history of industrial revolution we also have for those students who want to get a higher uh, specialization in mathematics for them we have specialization in mathematical economics for those of you who are not very comfortable with mathematics or for or those of you who want to specialize in core economics uh, on core uh, theoretical economics have the option of choosing theory of political economy in india moving on to semester 4 you have international economics you have law and economics you have primary secondary research therein you have a lot of floating credits of courses in liberal arts related to psychology mm -hmm. and uh, various other subjects then you have uh, a compulsory non uh, credit course of integrated disaster management fitness for life 
where you get the certificates when you pass those courses. You also have electives in uh, foreign languages in fourth semester. Kushbu uh, ma'am in this semester will talk about uh, after uh, she comes, after I finish up with the academics, for academics, she'll talk about internationalization, that is students exchange program that students opt for in the fourth semester. Then coming to fifth semester and sixth semester, which is the final year when the students come up, you have a lot of elective courses over here apart from the general core courses. The core courses become lesser in number and there are a lot of electives that we are giving you if you want to specialize either in Indian banking and financial system or financial international financial management. Four courses are economic journalism, IT applications, macro macroeconomics and macroeconomics higher, that is the advanced macro microeconomics are an option over here for students who really want to work in research after their graduation. We have dissertation. Dissertation, although is a compulsory part of our course, students have to take a two credit course for dissertation. They can choose their own topic related to the research that they want to pursue further or they have interest in. Uh, we also have higher, higher financial electives for financial management, corporate finance for those of you who want to go ahead in uh, uh, finance and corporate finance. For those of you who had already taken up the uh, option of choosing either mathematics or going to core economics have now an elective between intermediary econometrics and agriculture econometrics. Coming to the final semester, we have four courses of for portfolio management, economic thought, environmental economics, international relationship, and also dissertation, the final dissertation that you're going to submit in the final semester. In the electives here, those of you who had taken, uh, taken up the choice between uh, agriculture and uh, intermediary will have an option between behavioral finance. So behavioral finance and applications of behavioral economics and finance, somebody he had asked me in the chat, I remember. So you definitely have a separate subject which deals with behavioral and Ashvesha ma'am teaches that subject in semester six. You have an elective of either taking operations research, behavioral or industrial organization. And also we've introduced gender economics and labor economics. So that is the kind of varied courses in electives that you can opt for when you come to fifth and sixth semester. It starts from the second semester and goes on to the sixth semester wherein you can opt for different courses related to different disciplines where you learn and have uh, experience of these courses which are interdisciplinary in nature and not only related to the core economics. Uh, related to the finance part wherein you was, uh, people have uh, will have to opt for higher finance, you have taxation, electives between taxation and international financial management even in the sixth semester. So basically this whole course uh, comprises of total in the sixth semester, it comprises of 144 credits. So that is related to the uh, total of the core uh, academics that we have. I will come back and uh, you, you can have, uh, somebody has asked me about the topics available for dissertation. Dissertation is completely your choice. So you have mentors over here, the faculty that specialize in different areas. So you will get a list of them when you come to the fifth semester in the fourth semester and you get the list of the faculty which specialize in their areas. And then you can opt for them and uh, go for uh, go under their guide guidance for dissertation. I will come back and try to uh, answer to all your questions in the chat box related to core academics and other queries. Uh, I will now request Kushbu ma'am to please come and talk about internationalization and related issues. Kushbu ma'am, please. Yeah. 
Thank you, Neharika. Uh, so good morning, everyone. And uh, I must mention, we have opportunities for semester exchange and summer school programs. So um, usually in the fourth semester, we have something which is the global immersion program. And uh, like uh, Niharika Ma'am mentioned, we have floating credits in the fourth semester. And so, which means that you have three core courses, which you have to uh, appear for, uh, which is uh, for 12 credits and the remaining 12 credits, you can do a semester exchange abroad. And you also have the um, advantage of choosing courses of your choice. You know, so we do not necessarily have to get those courses mapped. The three courses have to get mapped, but the other courses we do not have to get it mapped. So uh, uh, we have, uh, you know, we have MOUs and tie-ups with various universities abroad, and some of the common ones. I'll just share my screen one minute. Yeah, so these are some of the universities with which we have had tie-ups over the last few years. And um, so we have DHPW, Ravensburg, Heidenheim. We've had Dauphin University. We also have Bremen School of Economics and uh, we have Leibniz University, Hanover. So these are some of the uh, common ones. Apart from that, if you wish to opt for a semester exchange or for a summer school in some other university, you have the choice to do that as well. But of course it has to be rooted uh, through our international office, which is um, the Symbiosis International Office. And then, of course, you have to get in touch with, uh, with me. So uh, we uh, also have opportunities. We're also trying to explore to see, um, you know, how our students could do uh, maybe internships um, abroad for universities. One or two of them have applied for it, and they've also got through. Now, uh, these are some of the uh, universities where our alumni have gone, uh, you know, after they have graduated uh, from uh, SSC. So um, these, so this basically gives you like an idea of you know what you could do um, if you wanted to take a semester exchange. Now um, there are certain criteria for this because I am very sure the next question that you would want to know is that what are the criteria. So I'll just quickly tell you that. So um, uh, we basically look at so there's a selection committee which where you have to appear before you will have an interview. You have to submit your SOP. And of course, we will look at what your grades have been in the past, curricular activities and overall, because you will be representing symbiosis wherever you go. And then, of course, you will have a selection committee where you will be appearing for the interviews. And depending on how many seats are available and how many applicants are available, also on the basis of merit, we would select you. And then, of course, um, the Symbiosis International uh, uh, Institute, which looks into you know these, uh, um, in, uh, these initiatives, and uh, SSC would uh, collectively look at other um, things like, for example, the accommodation and other things, which is important, right? So uh, apart from this, uh, we are also trying to see how we could have more um, exposure where, you know, maybe we could do some kind of research, student research, uh, which also would give you an international exposure, okay? So we also have short-term um, summer school programs, like I mentioned earlier, which could be maybe for a week, for two weeks, three weeks, depending on, you know, what is your area of interest and where you would like to go. And if you choose a course from any of the uh, semesters where a course is very similar in terms of syllabus, then we give you the credit for the same. So likewise for semester exchange also, we advise that you go on in the fourth semester, but then uh, if you feel that you would like to go in any other semester also, that's fine. But it's just that, um, you know, the, we have to see how the courses can get mapped. And if, for example, any of the courses do not get mapped, so you do not have to worry. All that you have to do is put in a little extra effort and then maybe appear for the paper in the coming semester. So we do not consider that as a backlog. But then since that did not, uh, you know, you do not, do not have a course which could have got mapped. So we give you the uh, flexibility that you can appear for that paper in the next semester. Yeah. So if you have any more questions pertaining to internationalization, you can uh, put it in the chat box and send it to me. I will address it. That's it. Thank you. Varun, sir. Yeah. Hi. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Varun. Um, basically, I have done my bachelor's, master's from uh, Mumbai and then PhD from Gokhale Institute. Uh, of politics and economics, Pune. And for last four and a half years, 
I've been associated with Symbiosis School of Economics as an assistant professor. Firstly, uh, what fascinates me about this institution is to work under the umbrella of Symbiosis. So what is Symbiosis first? Uh, basically, I would just like to say that as our motto is about Vasudev Kutumbakam, that the world is one family. And uh, we have been fortunate, I consider myself fortunate to be under the, uh, to work in an institution which has been mentored, or I would like to mention about our visionary leader, Dr. S.B. Musumdar. So Dr. S.B. Musumdar started the Symbiosis organization in 1971. Um, it got a deemed university status in 2002, 2003. And presently, um, Symbiosis has around more than 40 institutions under its ambit, right from engineering, management, uh, health sciences, medical, uh, media communication, and economics as well. So uh, one thing when you come to SEC is that you are coming under Symbiosis umbrella, and that is a huge plus point. We have a lot much interaction with other institutions as well. Um, do read about our founder, Dr. S. B. Muzumdar, who was who has been conferred with Padma Shri and Padma Bhushan for his contribution in the field of economics. So now, when it comes to placement, um, I would like to mention that in SSC we have the place BSc placement cell. Uh, the main task of this placement cell is about. Um, um, organizing recruitments, campus recruitments, as, as well as uh, the training of students, because the whole idea is that students have to be, you know, uh, they have to take a new role as a professionals once they pass out from their graduation, once they complete their bachelor's, so that the transition from a student to professional uh, it is as a placement cell, uh, which comprises of students. So we have around 10 to 20 student members uh, within the BSc placement cell. So we have the third year students as well as the second year students. So this placement cell uh, organizes different activities like uh, training workshops. Uh, with the help of Dr. Ashlesha Swaminathan, we have a career counseling. We have different value added courses going on, uh, workshops and guest lectures, alumni interaction. So that first thing that we do is that student is clear that where does he wants to head up after his graduation? Does he wants to go in for a master's or does he wants to go in for take up a job and then probably take up a master's program? Because master's being a two year degree program, uh, some people feel it's a huge investment uh, which you are making. You're giving your two years of time and that will set agenda for your career as well. So if uh, so, they some people uh, like for example, every year um, in our third year bachelor's program, there are around 30, 40 students of sometimes 50 students who are clear that they would like to go in for placements, and basically they um, sit in for the placements. So uh, this year we had around 11 companies coming in. Uh, for the uh, bachelor's program. And I'm happy to share that uh, around uh, 11, around 29 students have already got placed in this pandemic year. I will just share my screen and uh, list the, um, the companies which have come because I've got few questions about where are our alumni placed and which kind of industry. So just give me a minute, I'll just share my screen. Um, I hope my screen is visible. Yeah. So, uh, so in this year we had ZS associates. So we had a firms which are either in consultancy, uh, data analytics, market research, uh, some also in educational development. Uh, so one aspect is that our students, um, not only work in terms of in data analytics firms, uh, in market research, in finance. Some also join in uh, because there are few students who have the interest in entrepreneurship, business development. They have that skill of marketing and which they would like to, you know, grow. Uh, and that is why they also take it up marketing and business development jobs. They also go in for research think tanks. 
and uh, some directly uh, also work with NGOs. So in case of NGOs, I would like to mention about uh, NGO like uh, Hak Darshak or um, uh, some like Dwara Research. So basically these are the NGOs who are working at the ground level for some community development or social development. So our students, uh, after doing your bachelor's program, uh, there are many avenues in which you can either go in for your job opportunities, whether it is finance, whether it is uh, data analyst work, research analyst work, uh, whether it is also program officers. So may some students after their graduation program have joined um, a different fellowships program like chief minister fellowship program, LAM fellowship program to work with a member of parliament or uh, to work in Niti Ayo. So Niti Ayo come up with different young professional programs. Uh, so now in these days, uh, many, I'll say different ministries or different uh, government institutions are coming up with programs like agriculture, uh, young professionals program, where they are hiring young professional, the, uh, they are contractual like one to two years experience, so that a student gets an experience or to work in the public policy field. So uh, I'll be happy to take up the questions and I hope I have addressed whatever has been uh, raised to me. I think that's it from my side. Thank you. Thanks, Niharika. Good, uh, good morning to all of you. So I just uh, wanted to share with you a little bit about uh, you know, the non-academic side of what we offer at uh, SSC. So uh, you know, as as our, if you saw the slideshow that uh, that we have, the little video that we had at the beginning, it talks about holistic uh, development. So I think you heard about academics, you heard about internationalization, you heard about placements. Um, you will hear about the extracurricular activities, but uh, we also are you know there for you uh, to support you in terms of um, your well-being. So we do we collaborate with one of the institutes at Symbiosis, which is called Symbiosis Center for Emotional Wellness. And they have allocated dedicated counselors for our students. Um, you know, so we, you know, the pandemic has really brought into the limelight, uh, you know, various uh, mental health uh, issues that we need to address and be aware of. And we are, uh, you know, we are also, working towards that uh, or always working towards the well-being of our students so we have that in place for anyone who feels like they need any kind of support you can reach out to the counselors if you have questions regarding uh, as varun mentioned uh, regarding you know your career uh, i am available i do the career counseling for uh, second years and third years so you can approach me at any time uh, to discuss you know, various options that might be available or what you think is best, how to work out, what you have to do. Uh, in addition to that, we have a mentor-mentee program where each student is mapped uh, to a faculty and you can approach that faculty for any issues that you may be having, any challenges that you might be facing and we are there to help you and help you get it sorted and address those issues. Um, so I just wanted to mention about that. So you, you don't feel that it's all just about the academics and all about career, but also we want you to develop and grow as human beings as well and learn skills that will support you for the rest of your career. Uh, in addition, I think Shilpi has asked me to talk about the written ability test subjects. So the written ability test, uh, which you have to take as part of the set, Basically, it's there to test what is your, um, the, the level that you have in communicating in written English, right? So that is basically what we're looking at. The topics are various. There can be, like, they could be economics related. They could be general knowledge related. It, it could be anything. You have a selection of topics. You don't have one topic that you have to write. You can choose from a few topics usually. 
and you just have to write whatever number of words is written there. But the idea behind it is to check your uh, aptitude in, for in written English. So, uh, you know, how well can you express yourself? Right? So don't worry if you're not from an economics background and you have to write something about economics, that is not the case. Just uh, current affairs, news, general knowledge, a very wide uh, area, or just even an opinion about something. So that those are the, usually those are the options that you can choose from. So that's it from me. Thanks, Neeraj. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, can I please request Swati to come and share her experience? Right. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, good morning to everyone present here. I am Swati Srivastav, currently in my second year, soon to be in my final year here at SSE. So the past two years at this institute have helped me evolve and grow immensely as an individual. Back in school, I was always a student who was heavily engaged with co-curricular activities and sports. And I always wanted to continue these activities, you know, once I come to college. Thankfully, that desire has fulfilled and how beautifully it has been fulfilled because SSE offers a plethora of activities to choose from, MUN, chess, theater, dance, investment and business, entrepreneurship, art, small talk, debating, name the field and there is a club for it. Our director, Professor Jyoti Ramani, Tande Ramani has always been very supportive and welcoming of new ideas and activities. And for the same reason, last year, we introduced and came up with this new cell, which was LGBTIQ cell, which basically aims towards gender sensitization and talks about the various social issues. And it's, it's a safe space to discuss social issues. There were additions of many new and fresh activities, such as the book reading club, movie review club, etc. And all these clubs are led by students and are open to all. So SEC has ample of opportunities for co-curricular activities. Moving on to sports, sports has been a very integral part of the life of student at SEC. There is, there is a sports council which comprises of dedicated and talented individuals and overlooks all sports related ventures of our college. So we have dedicated routine team practices, fun interbatch matches, students versus faculty matches. We at SSE thoroughly enjoy and encourage sports and fitness amongst our individuals. There is an on-campus gym facility and we also have an on-campus volleyball court. And we use other facilities in the vicinity of our college for practices of other sports. Uh, we also have a sports festival, which, is, uh, which operates under the name of Equilibria and all the tournaments and Equilibria related tournaments take place at the Lavley campus. The Lavley campus is one which is situated in Lavley and is a huge campus of symbiosis. And it has exceptional infrastructure for a lot of sports. Now, Speaking for myself, as a part of the Symbiosis family, an active student at the Institute and the Assistant General Secretary of the BSc batch, I can safely say that the culture at SSC is very inclusive, welcoming and diverse. The Student Council, a body of elected members, is a very approachable, cooperative and helpful group of young individuals who are chosen to help students and management in various events. The council members have relentlessly worked in engaging students with activities by organizing various events, such as cultural nights, talk shows, game nights, all year long, despite the challenges that we had in the last year because of the pandemic. And having said so much about the Institute, I can recall this one incident when in from my freshman year, when my mother complained about me not missing home enough. And that for a fact was true because at SC, I found a new world, a new world full of possibilities, which allowed me to experiment, which allowed me to learn, take initiatives, lead, inquire, and most importantly, it allowed me to explore. SSC provides an environment so warm, welcoming, and conducive for almost feels that you found a family at SSC. Uh, as I conclude, I would like to take this opportunity to express my gratitude towards the director, Professor Jyoti Chandramani, for her exemplary support and guidance all throughout, our esteemed faculty members for their efforts and guidance, and the entire management staff of Symbiosis School of Economics for their patience and constant support in various areas. I would also like to thank all students and parents for taking out valuable time from their routines to join us here today. Thank you again and hope you have a nice day ahead. Thank you, Swati. Uh, Varun, sir, I think uh, there are some queries related to placements. Can you please address them? Yeah. You're on mute. Yes, thank you. Uh, Samanjan asked me to just go through these slides. So once again, I'll just go through it. 
So basically, these are some of our past recruiters. So there are a few financial firms also, like uh, we have Tres Vista. So basically, uh, the firms, uh, someone asked me about to brief about more about the financial placement. So the students get a role of a financial analyst. So the idea is that uh, many foreign financial firms, they look uh, for the background information about the different new firms in which they have to make investments. So Tres Vista is kind of like a knowledge process outsourcing uh, unit. And uh, so the students are trained for doing financial analysis to look at, you know, as we do in portfolio management or financial management to look at the viability of investments. So that kind of background research or, uh, you know, making your complete financial reports of different uh, financial of different firms in which whether the company should invest in so these are what our students work when it comes to the uh, the role of financial analyst this is what i can say about tres vista now if someone is having interest in some kind of like ca firm or you know so it also depends on the student interest about which kind of firm he would like to join in so, for example, we had a student, Sakshi Gupta, who along with her bachelor in economics was also pursuing actuarials. So she joined in Bajaj Alliance, uh, which is an insurance firm in Pune. So it is not that uh, you can, you have to just stick to um, finance kind of firms. It is like along with your bachelor's program, if you have interest in either chartered accountancy or uh, you have interest in actuarials, you can pursue it uh, simultaneously. It depends on your, totally on your interest. Uh, another question which I got was about, um, uh, uh, apart from corporate environment, what are the other kind of placements? So again, I'll just like to reiterate here that uh, BSc Economics is honors is a, like a graduate program and you can either go in for an MBA program. Someone also asked me about masters in economics or a MBA program. Now our students, uh, many of our students after their BSc economic programs, uh, they have ventured into MBA. So few of our students have directly got into it, the MBA programs at I am Bangalore, I am Indore, so Ria Gupta of 1821 batch, she has got an offer for I am Indore. Uh, Indira uh, of 1821 batch has got an offer from I am Indore. Shivali Pandey directly got from her from from 1518 batch from directly from the BSc Economic Honors. She directly got an offer. Matlab, through all giving CAT exam and the uh, uh, selection process, she got into uh, I am Bangalore. So it is up to you that where you would like to go. Many students also go in for uh, doing the master's or the PhD program um, in the foreign university, whether it is Europe, Australia, US. So if you would like to know that where our alumni have gone, I would suggest you can go to our LinkedIn page also. And uh, there you could find that where our, our alumni are. So that is, you know, which kind of firms they are, which where are they studying. So there also you could uh, find it. Uh, I'll just take back some few more questions that have come in. Um, can we do internships during our second or third year? Yes, absolutely. Uh, the placement cell also facilitates uh, the um, uh, also facilitates internships because as we are in touch with the companies, uh, so one of the important tasks which the placement cell does each year is to contact the companies. You know, to build uh, why why should they recruit us? So uh, many companies, uh, if they do not have a full-time roles, they do offer uh, internship opportunities. So if you look at our curriculum, a student is required to do uh, between first and second year kind of a service learning where he has to work for an NGO. Whereas in between second and third year, he is, has to do an internship with a business unit. So, um, so this is a part of our experiential learning in which you are required to do an internship and it is compulsory. Uh, another question which I have got is what are the career prospects after, um, 
so khushi asks please explain about the career opportunities in management after economic honors so um, in management i can just say that many of our students either taken a uh, uh, job uh, in the firms so it may not be just research analyst they also take it up jobs like business development and marketing um when it comes to mba as i have mentioned they uh, apply for different universities in india or abroad but many of them uh, do join mba programs as well uh, i think i hope kushi have answered it uh, another question is that do the packages signify ctc yes uh, the packages do signify uh, they were the cost to company so the highest was a 19 lakh uh, package that was a d show it was a financial uh, firm it's a global financial firm financial services firm so that had a package of 19 lakh uh, per annum but i would just like to say here that um, this includes 5 lakh rupees insurance uh, so this is a complete ctc uh, only uh, one student was got the offer although you know many students sat but only one student got selected but overall the average package 6.64 lakh is uh, ctc okay let me take some more questions i have got it uh, how to go in investment banking line um, okay that's a good question uh see um let me be honest now huh? uh, finance has multiple uh, sub disciplines investment banking is one of the sub discipline so one aspect is that once you are once you are doing your graduation uh, either you can look for internship because i know one student shivani sandhu she was from 1619 batch she did not got placements she mother sat for few companies but did not goes but after her bachelor's on her own she applied to goldman sachs and she got it in goldman sachs uh, the uh, as a you know she was an assistant to an investment banker but still she got a role a job in an investment banking firm now uh, investment banking is a separate discipline and maybe a masters program uh, mba would you know or uh, would be a better if you would like to go or you know there are different pr programs in masters in finance these days after your bachelor so if you want you can you know jamnalal bajaj institute of management studies mumbai has i think masters in finance but it's a separate line in our uh, bachelor's program we have courses like financial management business accounting portfolio management so i think that is uh, that is matlab it's up to you you know we give the basic knowledge about the finance but investment banking is totally a specialized line uh, okay that's it i think is bcom better or a bba better um, i would just say that it is all depends on your career interest uh, let me be frank with you that you have to make decision for yourself maybe you can take help of career counselors to make you understand which subjects you have better interest in you know which are the fields in which you would like to make your career in and accordingly you make a choice because in a bcom course you are learning more on uh, accountancy subjects whereas if you look at our ba economic honors course you are more inclined towards uh, economic uh, aspect so you know economic is core apart from economy there are allied subjects like finance industry agriculture and we have lot of statistics and math based you know to build the strong foundation um thank you thank you for the questions i hope uh, i have asked i think so someone asked me what is the ranking of ssc in india uh, honestly for economic programs there has no not been any someone has not conducted ranking like uh, we have rankings for mba institutions or this so far i am not aware about uh, any institutions which have conducted ranking but i would just like to say that ssc is one of the best you get good curriculum you get good exposure you get good extra exposure of extra curricular activities experiential learning and you will enjoy being at ssc uh one question is what type of questions will be asked in personal interview to a bsc economic student uh, let me be honest that generally as panelists we have a conversation with you we would just like to see 
what spark that you have you know what are your interest so based on your um, interest your your personality is what the major decision what the you know the faculty makes in and gives his recommendation about your interest whether you are fit for the you know whether you will be able to uh, gel along in the course or not and there could be some question which may ask you about your interest so suppose you are from uh, a bcom or you have if you have done 11 12th commerce so he may ask you what was your favorite subject and based on what you say he will start asking you about that question if someone asks you that you have done, done 11 12th economics so what are the topics that really interested you and that you know from there the discussion will move forward it depends on different panel to panel how uh, he approaches uh, the conversation but the whole is we just look at try to assess your personality um, please share some more details about vat i've got a question i just say that vat are just general questions you know you have to write an essay on some topic which looks at your uh, basically we look to assess your english your thought you know how clearly you are able to articulate your thought i think that but the uh, the topics for written ability test are quite general it could be something about covid 19 impact of covid 19 or you know it could be any general topic on time management on your best day of your life it could be very general topic and it could be economic topic also because there are a lot number of topics and randomly uh, you know each student may get a topic uh, approximately how many questions are there in a vat i think one to two you have to just write an essay of few matlab, you may be given some time to write an essay on one topic uh, that's it from my side. I think I've answered and I'm really, uh, do you support entrepreneurs and family businesses anyway? Uh, we have an entrepreneurship cell and we uh, have a lot many, uh, it organizes uh, workshops or, you know, interaction with the entrepreneurs to help support. And at Symbiosis, we have, uh, you know, incubation centers where uh, support like funding could be done if you have a great idea. Can we take time from that part and use an MCQ, maybe Shilpi ma'am would be able to answer this question. Shilpi ma'am, uh, there's a question on, can we take time from that part and use an MCQ? Yes, I got uh, that question as well. So I have written, I think Aryan, you have asked this question. So I've written to you that you have to check the uh, detailed exam guidelines for that because the guidelines are there on the set website. Uh, uh, I mean, for now, it has been said that 60 minutes are for MCQ and 30 minutes are for VAT. For exact marking, when, when which section will close, just check the detailed guidelines on the online exam. Uh, there is an entire set of details present on the set website. I just request you to go through that. All right. Uh, Kushpuma, yeah, thank you. Can you please? Thank you, Ravinsa. Yeah. Thank you, Shilpi ma'am. Can you please take the question? Yeah, thank you, Niharika. I have a few questions. Uh, so regarding internationalization first, uh, are these courses paid by the Institute or are they free? So uh, so if you, the, the seats which we have through an MOU, we have tuition waivers for them. But then if you opt for some other semester exchange or summer school with which we do not have an MOU with the university, then of course there will be some payment for that. So it depends, you know, on which institutes are you choosing. So uh, what about London School of Economics? So we do not have an MOU with London School of Economics, but then uh, we've had students in the past who have gone for a semester exchange. So we would probably, if you, if you are keen on going, you can apply for it. And if you get selected, we will help you with the course mapping and other logistics. And then you can opt for this as well. Uh, so a repeat of the university's name. So uh, like I mentioned earlier, we have Bremen School of Economics. We have Berlin School of Economics. Then we have uh, DHPW, Heidenheim, Ravensburg, Leibniz University, Dauphin University, and uh, quite a few others. So these are uh, some common ones. But of course, apart from that, there are many others that one can opt for. We have an MOU. And if you need to see the details with, of the universities with which we have an MOU, then you can check on the website, on the SIU website. <clears throat> okay. Um, 
then approximate cost of semester exchange program so this depends it varies from university to university and also it depends on year to year basis i mean uh, i've been handling this for quite some time and then it differs it's not the same but approximately somewhere between 2 to 3 lakhs yeah it's okay <clears throat> scholarships so for scholarships uh, sometimes we do have opportunities for scholarships and when we do have we will be floating it with the uh, semester exchange opportunities and of course you can apply for the scholarship and if you get through then of course the cost is going to come down uh every year approximately how many students are selected for the summer school so uh, it depends so like last year we had about 14 students who had got selected for the semester exchange and uh, and um, but however because of the pandemic a few of them uh, couldn't go so it was online otherwise usually we have about uh, about 10 to 15 students who do get selected and summer school also we have about 6 to 8 students so it depends on the number of seats that is available from the university and then we float that to you and then based on um, the interview process that we have then the students are shortlisted apart from merit in academics what else qualifies so apart from so it's mainly you know we see the attendance that you've had because of course this is something which usually students go in the second year so how you have been performing in the first year um, you know your extra curricular extra curriculars and of course very important is that why do you want to do a semester exchange or a summer school so for that we ask you to prepare an sop and submit an sop and uh, of course we want to understand that what is the reason like you know you would like to go and how we, it would help you or how you would be able to contribute to the institute um if this opportunity has been given to you and uh, so regarding uh, uh, the uh, tie ups like i mentioned you can check on the website we have the list and then of course uh, once you join in you have further questions you can always uh, ask you can get back to me yeah that's it thank you thank you niarika thank you everyone Nihari Kamal, I think we can conclude the session now. Yes, we can. Okay, so yeah, thank you everybody for joining in. Um, all the best for your set examination and VAT uh, and PI. Uh, yeah, ma'am. Uh, can I just take one or two questions? Yes, of course, of course, I do. Yeah, there was a question on uh, maths. Which topic is more important from higher maths and set general? I would just like to say uh, the mathematics, which the section of set is, you know, about the quantitative aptitude, like the exams which you prepare for your, I mean, competitive exams. So that kind of maths, which is like up to tenth level, ninth, tenth level. So those topics are covered in the maths section. Um, I'm not sure about uh, someone asked uh, Shilpi Ma'am on the GK. whether we have a gk general knowledge uh, current affairs questions so i would just request you to just look at the guidelines if there is a portion on that which i do not have an idea um how many students are there in the classroom for core courses so generally uh, someone also asked me about the batch size so batch size uh, is around 150 to 160 students in one batch and uh, they are divided into three divisions so each division has around 50 to 60 students that's it ma'am can you please tell me about the scholarship if any are provided yes we do have scholarships kushbu ma'am uh, uh, would you like to mention we have like cybage uh, scholarship uh, kushbu ma'am are you there yeah we do have scholarships uh, uh, based on merit based there are scholarships चैनल so we have shared with you uh, the social media handles of our uh, sse so if you would like to know what kind of activities do look at our linkedin page facebook page instagram 
where we keep on uh, sharing our student achievements or whatever the uh, activities, events that are held at SSE. Do uh, like our social media handle so that you will get notifications as well. Okay. Thank you. I think uh, we can conclude the session now. For all the updates and details, keep checking the SET website and SSE's website. And uh, all the best for your exams. Take care, all of you. Stay safe. Okay. Thank you, everybody, for joining in. I'll now conclude the session. Thank you.